Welcome back, everyone, to Guns and Gear Network. I appreciate everybody tuning in to us. Today's topic is going to be training on a budget. I know ammo has gone outrageous. It's hard to get sometimes and so forth. And there's a few options uh, uh, that you can utilize for training that will help you uh, still um, be proficient learn new skills and so forth and there's a few of those one is just straight up dry practice it's where you take your firearm make sure it's clear and unloaded and you literally practice with your firearm uh, whatever that whatever that firearm is whether it may be your uh, everyday carry maybe uh, your competition pistol rifle so forth maybe your self-defense uh, rifle or pistol whatever the case may be that's one option the other option is some new laser technology that's been around for a few years now that uh, either you buy a specific laser pistol or you buy a laser module that goes in your particular firearm. And they make all kinds for about any caliber and any weapon you want to put them in. So a couple good options. And the option that I came across about going on, I guess, probably 15, 16 years ago that really intrigued me is Airsoft. And um, a lot of guys are going to wig out over airsoft and so forth, but just listen to the video and then you decide what what you what you think. Um, I was at a gun show about 16 years ago, 15 years ago, and there was a gentleman there allowing people to shoot these airsoft guns. And you pay a couple bucks, just like you do at a local fair, you know, where you shoot the little targets and stuff. And I, I sat there and watched it for a few minutes and thought that's really cool. I'd never seen them before. You know, of course, I'd seen paintball. But I'd never seen anything like that. And they were fully automatic and, and whatever. And he was shooting. He had some cans and he had some like a paper plates set up and this and that. He had like a bullet trap in behind it. And he was allowing people to shoot these things. And some of them were really neat and really cool. And it caught my attention. And, and and yeah, the neatness caught my attention. Don't get me wrong. But I said, man, those things have a place. Those could be used for training. And... Um, Back long ago, law enforcement especially was limited on how they uh, trained. And uh, what I mean by that is a lot of them back in the day used literally paintball, which was not realistic. I mean, the, the weapons, of course, was nothing like their you know, weapons they use on a daily basis, whether it be their sidearm. And I'm talking, this is back during the days of wheel guns. You have to remember the transition out of wheel guns to semi-automatics probably didn't truly take place till the late 80s, early 90s is when it really started transitioning. Even our local state police here, I forget exactly what year they changed over, but it was late 80s, but, and they were still using Smith & Wessons. And um, so the, uh, the options are very limited. Some of the uh, agencies were using munitions, and unfortunately they were probably dedicating most of that to SWAT teams. And your local street officer just did not have the training, you know, available to them because simulations A was so expensive and B, they just had a limited supply of it and so forth. And they just didn't utilize a lot of it with your regular street officers, which I thought was a terrible thing. You know, officers need good training. So the more I got to looking at these pistols and, and rifles, airsoft, I started researching them a lot the best I could because uh, this was kind of precursor to everything's on the Internet. So it took me a little while uh, to figure some of it out on my own. And um, so I actually started a company back long ago called Tactical Training Solutions. And it was literally based around airsoft being utilized for training for law enforcement, military, so forth, security agencies, that kind of thing. Because I just saw the, the, such an invaluable tool to them. And let me tell you, the, the A, paintball, it's not realistic. B, it uh, leaves a mark. You know, it's obviously paint in the ball. So they were limited where they could train. Well, simunitions, again, very cost prohibitive to a lot of agencies, and it was a high, it was a higher velocity marking round. So it was in limited, you were able, it was very limited of where you could use it. Also, you just couldn't call up your local school, bank, whatever, and say, hey, can we, you know, do some training at your facility um, after hours? And um, as soon as they hear that you're using some kind of marking round, the answer is no. Um, but with airsoft, very little to no damage to anything, um, unless you just point blank shot a th real thin, uh, glass window, it's not going to break. Um, so they, I just saw the huge advantage. Same thing with going out and training, um, traffic stops or warrant searches, you know, warrant searches, um, 
any of that type stuff. It just it just was there. I mean, it was I just thought it was a good tool. So based on that, we started the company and, and it did really well. And uh, my problem with the company was I didn't want to do a lot of traveling. So once the local agency started using it, and you know, and I kind of got past all that, um, I just didn't want to do the traveling. So we closed it up. But um, a lot of officers saw the great benefit in it. A lot of them still use it. I sold it not only to local agencies and some of the training schools uh, that where officers get their, it's called basic law enforcement training or, or rookie school, some people call it. Um, we, we sold some to those places and also to SWAT teams and street uh, you know, level officers that uh, um, either their uh, equipment person doing purchasing and or individual officers that they allowed them to buy it. So it worked really well once they saw the concept. And also, if you go back, you can get on the internet, and I've seen it. A lot of these airsoft people uh, get a lot of grief, man. Wow, they get the grief. And um, I don't think it's justified. I mean, the, as soon as somebody mentions airsoft, it's pew, pew, and oh, you just, that's airsoft, and this, that, and the other. Look, guys, I remember as a kid, one of my, some of my favorite times playing with my, my local neighborhood kids or, or family, my cousins and so forth, was playing Army and, and Cowboys and Indians. That was the two things. And, you know, we just loved it. And I, you know, paintball, it was, this was prior to paintball. We had cap guns. And, um, you know, we, uh, I, I was just, it was just really fun as a kid. And um, I can tell you, I have a young son now. And I can promise you, if he wants to play airsoft, I would much rather him do that and emulate some of his heroes, which are typically local law enforcement and or military figures that, uh, and he's out getting exercise. He's having fun. He's learning teamwork. He's learning uh, responsibility. He's learning a lot of things as long as it's done in a controlled environment because these, these airsoft guns look a, a lot alike. There's been incidents uh, recently in the news um, where kids were out just playing and, and they, got, they got killed. And if you're going to utilize these things, guys, you have to do it in a controlled environment and you have to be cognitive of your surroundings and what you're doing and where you're doing it with, and especially kids. So if you got kids and you're going to let them utilize airsoft to practice uh, uh, playing, you know, these type uh, military type games and stuff, make sure it's in a controlled environment that you're very aware of what they're doing and where they're at and so forth, because they can be dangerous because they do look a lot like the real thing and, um, but that's also the appeal that got me with the training because a lot of these uh, act really just like your normal firearms, whichever you know platform you want to carry. So let's talk a little bit about airsoft in general. There's a few different types of airsoft. You have electric and you have gas. And normally what I recommend to people, especially for training, um, is going to be your gas. Gas blowback. It's called GBB. Normally, you'll see if you go on a website and you're looking for airsoft, it'll see GBB, which means gas blowback. Some of them are not gas blowback, but they do utilize gas. And what that means is they utilize gas, but they do not reciprocate, like the slide does not move and so forth. And I'll show you this here. This is my Glock training pistol. This this right here does not reciprocate with some of the ones that do not say gas blowback. So if you want it to actually reciprocate like that, um, like a gas blowback um, or a real firearm, that's one of the things you need to look at. Then they have the electric. <clears throat> you don't see a lot of electrics in the in the uh, these uh, pistols. You will see them in the long guns, but they also make gas blowbacks in the long guns. M4s, AKs, you name it, they have it. There's about I don't I hadn't found yet a, a an actual real firearm. They have not made a. Uh, they may not make it now currently, but uh, they made it at one time. Um, I've seen it all in airsoft. So <clears throat> look about getting a gas blowback, guys, because it's the most realistic training. The magazines are a little more expensive than the electric style, but in the end, I think it's you're going to get more bang for your buck as far as training. So this is the Glock 17 version. Now, Glock has fought these guys forever. There's no official Glock pistol. So... You know, a company will start making them, and then Glock will come out, and they'll send cease and desist. They'll sue them, whatever the case may be, and they'll stop. So they come about. I've seen this ever since I've been involved in airsoft, guys, as far as utilizing these as training. And when a lot of the agencies were first switching over, a lot of them switched over to Glocks. 
and it was real difficult for me to find Glocks at the time. So I, a lot of times we were having to compromise and find something that was similar. In other words, what I mean is a striker fire uh, style pistol, whatever the case may be. Some of the agencies use Berettas. There was quite a few of uh, the Beretta 92s. There's quite a few gas blowback uh, Beretta versions around. So that was pretty easy. Um, MP5s and the... Uh, M4s. <clears throat> that technology has actually come a long way. Uh, back then it was really hard to find a gas blowback uh, long gun such as the M4 or the um, MP5 or the, one of those. It was just pretty hard to find so things have changed a lot since I was first in it and um, I don't really, I, like I said, I don't, I don't play airsoft, but you know, I do see the benefit in it as far as force on force training. A lot of your IPSC guys are utilizing these now and uh, your competition guys, two gun, three gunners, <clears throat> they're utilizing these uh, for practice. If you go and look on the internet, on YouTube and so, such, you can find all kinds of guys uh, utilizing these for practice. And also you'll find some highly regarded trainers that recommend uh, airsoft as a supplement to their normal your normal training does it replace um, your actual going to the range and firing real ammunition out of your real farm no it absolutely does not however as a matter of fact <clears throat> when we did um, training with officers if the head trainer <clears throat> when they were trying to schedule everything and they would ask our recommendation I said look when you get done training, make sure when we get done doing the airsoft portion that your guys go and have at least one range session with their real firearm soon after. I like having it the same day because it uh, because these, even though they reciprocate, have a little bit of recoil to them. A, they're not loud and so forth. So you don't want guys shooting these enough to where they kind of almost create a training scar, if you will. And I don't really... It's not a bad training scar, it's just they're not used to the recoil, the real firearm, they go out and because these feel just exactly like a real firearm. So again, we want to transition and not make it a issue, we want to make it uh, something that actually helps you. One of the things that is going to be difficult, and I'll tell you what we did to fix that, <clears throat> is if you're going to practice magazine change drills with these, you cannot do it like you normally do with your regular firearm. If you drop this, this is pretty heavy. This is where a lot of your weight is on these uh, firearms. Um, the uh, You will drop these and break this. So this right here actually is where you put your gas. It goes right there. So what did I do to fix that? If you're going to practice doing magazine changes, you're going to have to, what we did was we took, uh, go to like Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, Target, somewhere, and get you one of those big, huge bucket things that look like uh, they're usually over in the uh, aisle that sells like the clothes hampers and clothes baskets and that stuff. That uh, and it's some of the maybe where the totes are like plastic totes. And I, I found these big, huge green ones that had two big rope handles on them. And what we would do is I would put um, a pillow in the bottom of it, just pillow off your bed, whatever. You can put foam padding if you got uh, some foam padding laying around, and you put that in front of you. And so when you're coming up and you're shooting your target and you're going to drop your magazine to do your reloads, then this drops into the bucket where the pad is, and then you would come up and then reinsert and get back on target and practice that way. So that's how you kind of fix that. Drop it in on the ground, like grassy area if you're in a field. It's not so bad. Um, <clears throat> I don't like dropping them if I can help it. But I would normally, in something like that, I would do it, uh, to be honest with you. Also, these normally hold more than your standard firearm. So what I recommend is if your firearm, let's say the Glock 17, holds 17 rounds, load 17 rounds only. You want to be able to understand where you're at in training uh, when you're firing. You don't want to sit here and hold, load this thing. I don't know how many this thing holds because I always load it with 17, but I know it holds more than that. I think it holds maybe 30 rounds, potentially. So again, even your M4 style gas blowbacks, they hold more typically than what a 30 rounds. So just load them with what you normally carry. So that's what you need to do. All right, so a little bit about the equipment. A couple things to keep in mind here. Gas blowback usually means that they're gonna use what's called green gas, which is marketed and sold specifically for airsoft. It's fairly expensive, kind of hard to find. You just can't. Go to your local Walmart and normally find it. 
sometimes your sporting goods stores have it, but again, it's expensive. One cheaper alternative to that is your one pound canisters of uh, propane, just like a Coleman camping style that you would buy. I don't have one here um, right now, but uh, when you buy those, you'll need to buy this adapter. This screws onto the top of your propane, and this is what you would use in place of green gas. It's got a little cap, protective cap. I got this little tether on here so I don't lose my cap. And then um, also when you use propane, because propane is does not have silicone in it and mixed in with the gas, you'll need to make sure you have, this is called, this is actual, this came with that um, adapter. It's called GBB oil, gas blowback oil. Inject two drops of oil into your tank opening once, uh, once every eight to 10 fills. So find you some 100% silicone, do not use petroleum products. These things have all kinds of rubber seals that you will damage if you use petroleum products. There's one there, there's quite a few. There's one on the back here where that um, seal is here. There's one on the bottom. There's some internal here in the firearm itself. I keep calling these firearms, you know what I'm saying guys. These are, you know, the uh, replica airsoft. So um, let's keep that in mind, but that's one cheap way. Also BBs. Don't go out and buy the cheapest BBs you can find. Do you have to buy the most expensive? No, but you know, these came from Walmart. They're fine. Um, not having any issues with them. However, <clears throat> one little trick here. See, these are white. This is what you typically see. These came from Airsoft Outlet Northwest. 3,300 rounds. <clears throat> This right here is 5,000 rounds, and I think this is literally like, I don't know, 12 bucks maybe for 5,000 rounds. These are made by Crossman. These are black. Here's what I recommend. Buy the colored ones. And the reason I buy the colored ones, the velocities of these are so low that a lot of times you can see the BB come out of the barrel. Two things that cause problems with that. A, if you're playing force on force, um, the adversary can see the bullet, you know, or the BB coming towards them. They can actually duck and miss it. So you don't want to do that. You want to keep it as very realistic as possible. Also, when you're doing actual either target training, you can pick up a training scar by seeing the BB move, you know, as it comes out. You'll actually make adjustments. Um, instead of making adjustments with sights, you'll make adjustments basically kind of walking it. It's just like shooting a tracer. You'll walk it to the target. Don't do that because you're not going to be able to see a real firearm do that, obviously. So I, I recommend the color, darker color BBs. They don't reflect light quite as bad. And that's what does it. These actually reflect light. Um, and that's why you see the, 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 the flash of white go out the barrel and actually follow it. And the black's a lot harder to follow with your eyes, just the nature of it being darker. Um, so... That's what I recommend, guys. And uh, you know, again, if you uh, these these right here, you can pick up one hundred bucks normally, one hundred twenty, thirty bucks. Do not go buy the cheapest one you can find. Research them, research the brands. I'm not even going to attempt to go into the different brands and which ones I recommend because literally in airsoft, I don't know which one's worse, airsoft or um, the telephone market, like cell phone market. They change constantly. New versions, new companies, new everything. So. Get on some of the forums, look on the internet, and just literally see uh, what people review and what people recommend. Now, keep in mind these things are not foolproof and they're not bulletproof either. And they're not real firearms, so they're um, a little bit finicky at times. Can you work on them? Yes, some of these magazines will start leaking. There's videos on YouTube how to fix that. Um, so don't think you're gonna buy one and it's gonna be the exact quality of your Glock or your Smith & Wesson M&P, it's not. So plan on having some headaches along the way with it. That's a little bit of an aggravation, but in my opinion, it's worth the efforts to get past all those and be able to tinker with things and fix it yourself. There are replacement parts for some of these. It's kind of like going to Radio Shack back in the day and buying or Walmart buying a remote control car. I don't recommend doing that because yeah, it's a little cheaper car, but at the end of the day, you break apart, <clears throat> the whole car's done. Well, Airsoft's very similar. If you go to Walmart, yeah, you can return it, but it may or may not be within the return time. But if you buy good quality from a actual Airsoft shop that sells quality um, Airsoft guns, then you can actually replace parts and fix them. So it's no different than buying, like again, like an RC car from Walmart or an actual dedicated hobby shop that has uh, replacement parts. 
So keep that in mind when you're out looking and uh, usually you can find one that um, fits what you carry. Sometimes you can't, uh, Glock being the example, uh, sometimes they're harder to find. You can look on the used market on eBay and so forth. Sometimes you can find one that pops up if they're not making them currently. They also make some that use, um, they actually use um, CO2 cartridges. I don't personally recommend those. CO2 cartridges can get expensive, kind of a pain. Um, I don't really like those, but you may, if you're just have to, bound and determined to have one that's exactly like what you carry or use, then they may only make it in CO2, and I've seen that where they may have, and I'm just using this as an example, guys. I don't, I hadn't researched it a whole lot lately as far as what's on the market, but let's say the Smith & Wesson m and um, is actually licensed and available. Well, maybe great, but they actually uh, only make it in CO2. So think about that and think about some compromises potentially. They, there's tons of them for 1911 guys. If you're a 1911 guy, the, they're everywhere as far as uh, gas blowbacks. Um, you will not. If you're a 1911 guru, there's plenty of those you can buy uh, from your high speed, low drag to your standard just GI issue. I mean, they've got, they, they you name it, they've got it. Matter of fact, I built one when I was shooting some uh, Steel Challenge and Ipsic uh, type stuff. I was building, uh, I built some race guns, um, open division race guns out of airsoft for literally just to practice. And um, you can, I mean, they make every part you can think of for, like say an open division, you can have the exact replica, one-to-one -one replica of your rig and be able to practice. Worked in my ghost holster and all that. So yeah, I mean, there's, and keep in mind, some of the times these will not fit in your holster. This being another good example, this does not fit in my, uh, a lot of the holsters I carry that work for the Glock. Like this will not fit in a Serpa holster. <clears throat> this is a little bit bigger. Um, than a standard Glock 17. Some holsters it works, sometimes it doesn't. So keep that in mind. You may want to research around before you just go by. But man, I just think, guys, this is a great tool uh, <clears throat> for training. Whether I use it a lot training just uh, novice people learning how to shoot firearms. I'll literally take them out and we'll go over manual arms, uh, loading, reloading, <clears throat> holstering, unholstering, you know, just magazine changes, how to change the magazines, how to grip and so forth before we ever go to a range. Uh, I might spend a couple of hours with them shooting those. And I have reactive targets I've made. I've had uh, thin pieces of metal um, cut out uh, same size as like your uh, steel challenge and put them on PVC uh, pipe bases and made, you know, stuff like that. And, and they, they really like it. They get into it and it's fun. And, um, you know, so you can practice with this in your basement, in your garage, outside if it ain't too windy and uh, just have a good time with it and, and practice and learn. I, I use a timer, shot timer, and these work with a shot timer. You just have to change your sensitivity on your shot timer but uh, you can practice your reloads and everything and especially concealed carry guys that want to practice um, you know drawing from retention um, you know cover garments and all that this is a great safe way to do it and it's actually reactive so once you pull the firearm you can fire it and uh, you can actually aim for a target and hit it and you can hear it hit or see it hit so that's good so anyway, guys, I just wanted to bring you a little bit about Airsoft that if you didn't know about it or kind of was on the fence about it or didn't understand it, it does have its place, I think, in the real firearms community and um, has a place for, especially in training. So as always, guys, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll be bringing another video out to you shortly and hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Have a good day.